Hi there, how's it going? So I wanted to talk today about the Atari portfolio, aka the DIP Pocket PC. Uh, the Atari in the US and DIP in the UK was a late 80s palm top machine. The unit... Well, I've wanted one ever since that movie, you know, the one. Pin number. Go, baby, go, baby. All right. Pin number. Yes! Hey, it worked. All right. Easy money. Come on. And... I think this little unit has probably suffered the fate of the DeLorean where because it was attached to a movie uh, there's a certain gimmick factor that's gone along with it which is a bit of a pity really because this is a really delightful little machine. It is... It's from an era late 80s, 88, 89, where, at least those are the release dates, uh, the development started earlier than that, of course, where most designs, most machines, you know, those fifth gene computers, they called them, have a huge amount of innovation involved to do anything slightly different, like shrinking a machine down to this size, required a huge amount of innovative design and in the end elegance that creates something that's really quite special this machine isn't an organizer uh, which everything else of that era that is this size was an organizer this is a 90 95 percent dos compatible machine it is a baby pc it is a palm top machine well, i think that's pretty bloody magic so even though there are a couple other videos on YouTube about the portfolio, I'd like to sort of go over it again because before everybody rushes away and goes, oh, God, how boring, you know, it's not a PDP, it's not a big sun. There's a lot of really clever stuff that went into this. And um, I think that sometimes we overlook that machines of this era from a lowly Commodore to an Atari, for God's sakes, there's a lot of elegance here that, it's worth a second look. So the machine itself is, as I said, a palm, stop, palm top style. It is about the size of a VHS cassette. I'm assuming kids these days still know roughly how big those are, you little shits. It weighs about 450 grams. There's just not a lot to it, and this is the whole machine. It came at a time where the other palm tops of this size are organizers. Laptops, actual PC compatible machines, are of course much, much bigger. And they certainly didn't run on three AAA batteries. Now keep in mind, this is still TTL technology. So TTL technology, as we know, runs at 5 volts. Nominal, 3.3 three, uh, sorry, three 1.2 volt batteries gives you 3.6 volts when everything is healthy. So they're running 5 volt TTL ICs on 3.6 volts. So obviously there's a bit of power supply magic in there with the charge pump circuit. And out of that, they get a runtime of 50 hours out of this device, which I think is magic, discs or otherwise. The processor in the unit is an 8088. It's a sub-variant, actually. It's an 80C88, which they have it clocked at 4.9 megahertz. Now, at the time this is out, the 286 has already been out. It's in machines. The 386 is beginning to come onto the market. It's getting a bit of share. Uh, certainly at the time this was in development, I don't believe the 386 out, was out yet. But the 8088, which is a perfectly good processing chip, they usually clock that at 4.7 megahertz, 4.77. So this is actually clocked faster than most PCs 
several years prior. You know, we're talking 86 when this is in primary development, 86, 87. And the 8088 was the primary processor of machines up until 83, 84. So it's still pretty current. The unit has 128K of RAM and 256K of ROM. The ROM split up into two blocks, 128K each. And when you insert a disk card, one of the blocks gets swapped out and it gets overlaid on the top. It's got a 40 by 8 character screen here, uh, which does 240 by 64 pixel graphics, uh, two color, obviously. The um, contrast control is in software, it's in a register in the system. And as part of the built in operating system, and the graphics driver that they engineered, it virtualizes an 80 by 25 screen. So when you have the virtualization turned on, you zoom around a larger screen. This is a viewport on a larger screen, which you can scroll up and down, left and right. It's quite clever. It has a 63 character keyboard, a couple special keys to give you access to certain internal functions. Uh, the ROM. In keeping in mind again, this is 256k of ROM, they have the BIOS, the PC compatibility layer BIOS. They have DIP DOS, which, oopsie daisy, runs primarily out of ROM, so it uses very, very little RAM. It has a bunch of built-in applications as well. All of this in 256k of very tight code. So somebody spent a long time squeezing out every byte to fit that into 256 bytes of ROM, which is fantastic. So we have our operating system built in here, DIP DOS, and then as I said before we have a bunch of built-in applications. So we have our address book, a calculator diary, a text editor, and worksheet which is a Lotus 123 knock off and the address book works like organizer software in these days would where uh, let's see it acts in a manner such as a bunch of card index f files um, which I don't know the kids these days even know what those things are god I'm old uh, the software works really nicely. Again, this is all built into ROM. So, uh, nice tight packed code. The data is saved on the internal drive in um, a text format and in the technical reference manual. All of the formats are described. So if you want to write a piece of software that works with them to do other things, not a problem. The Lotus 123 piece of software that they use, their knockoff, is perfectly adequate. It has something like 45 built in functions, which for a basic spreadsheet works just fine. Uh, ranging, moving of cells, all sorts of things like that. There is nothing that it can't do that most people of this era are going to want to do. And keep in mind, this is very early in terms of spreadsheets. VisiCalc was not that old, so uh, for business software, this is a major boon. This is your business spreadsheet package that you take with you. Uh, we also have a basic setup wizard that allows you to turn on and off the uh, screen, uh, set up the clerks, application controls, and then the native internal printer, parallel and RS-232 port controls. All built in to 256k of ROM. The unit transferred data or stored data externally on these little disk cards here. Now it had an internal drive that you could steal some of the 128k of RAM for, but if you wanted anything else, the machine outside of it, you use these little disk cards. And they came in 32, 64, and 128k. And they are pretty much exactly the size of a credit card and not too much thicker. And you could get RAM cards like this. You could get one-time programmable cards. 
and then you could just get mustard rum cards and it's hard to tell but the rum card is just slightly thinner than the static ram card the uh, ram card has a battery which you can just make out the clip for here and it's a I believe it's a CR2032 coin cell battery so that's a 3 volt battery in here which will keep the static RAM alive inside the card for approximately one to two years depends on the size of the card but what we're saying is, is when this is powered down so there's no draw on the static RAM chips that at three volts it'll keep it alive keep the data effectively keeping the IC powered up for several years at a time the cards can be inserted and removed only when the unit is off they're simply pulled out from the slot, popped back in, and then power the unit back on. They're accessed in the exact same way that you would access a floppy disk drive. The uh, DOS compatibility layer uh, the dip DOS using standard stuff so that it's nice and familiar for regular DOS users. Now keep in mind that although this is only 128k in comparison to a five and a quarter inch floppy which was the primary media at this time physically you know it's not too bad now it's not 1.2 megs but it's not too bad during the life course of this machine, they came out with um, half meg, one meg, two meg, and then eventually four meg cards, although the later cards were made by another manufacturer. So, 1.2 megs, four megs. And notice the uh, size between the floppy drive mechanism and the entire machine. No, I think that's pretty cool. So I talked earlier about other laptops that are around at roughly this time. And as it happens, I happen to have several. So here we have the Atari portfolio. And the unit that preceded this. Uh, now, so, okay. This is released in mid-88. In 1986, the machine that took the world by storm it was the Toshiba T3100 and it's slightly bigger brother uh, not physically the T3200 with its fantastic gas plasma Daglo orange display full keyboard no battery IEC header it has a ISA bus, takes full size ISA cards. One point four MIG external AT keyboard. So this machine, which does sit on your lap, but without a battery, doesn't mean you can really go with you, is nineteen eighty six. In 1987, we have the Toshiba T1200. The T1200 has a beautiful bright blue LCD display. Again, full keyboard, internal hard disk, does include a battery finally. Does not last very long. It's slightly fancier brother, one year later, the T1200XE, also includes a battery, which at this present moment I can't make come out, same screen, same keyboard, and then a year after the Atari comes out, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Three months after the Atari comes out, there is the Compaq SLT286. What is this? This is the power supply. Now, all of these laptops are superlative laptops. Um, the SLT286 and the big T3200 are favorites of mine because of this fantastic display. Uh, and then the wonderful keyboard and the huge amount of space, internal disks, things like that. Uh, although not so much in the case of the T3200. But, in comparison to all of these fully DOS compatible laptops, you have the Atari portfolio, which is mostly compatible. And of course, we have uh, the application. Easy money. I know, I know, I know. Lame. Apologies for that. I got a bit carried away. So this video is getting a bit long. I'm going to cut it off here. I have a bunch more stuff to talk about though, so I think I'll do another video next week. Uh, we'll include some history, a bit more technical detail, those sorts of things. If you have been, thank you so very much for watching. Hope you guys have a good one.